I'm assuming by now you've seen Instagram Reels just like these. They are absolutely everywhere and for good reason. But something that I get asked all the time is, is Zach, how do you make them? Well, today we're gonna to be covering exactly that. And before we dive in, I wanna let you know that these are some of the best performing Instagram Reels I've ever had on my Instagram page. So they're a great way to grow your account and they're a great way to show off your horizontal footage. And I'd recommend today to hang around until the end of the video because I'm gonna also show you a little bit of a bonus tip for you. I'm gonna also show you exactly how to do this with a color grade, which is a very, very sought after, I guess, effect as well. So today we've got a load to burn through. So let's dive in to Premiere Pro. Okay, so here we are inside of Premiere Pro, and the first thing that you're gonna wanna make sure you've got are five clips. Of course, you want these shot horizontally, so that's a very big key factor. And then you also wanna have a calculator at hand. I know it sounds weird, we're editing video, why do we need a calculator? I'll show you in just a bit, but that's what you need to get started. Okay, so once you've got your five clips and they're all imported into Premiere Pro, you then wanna make sure they're all the same length and they're all either slowed down or you're already happy with the speed of them. So for me, my clip lengths here are four seconds and eight frames and they all look fairly good. Four seconds and eight frames, four seconds and eight frames. Okay, four seconds and eight frames across the board and they're also all slowed down to 50% because I shot this in 50 frames per second and this is a 20 frames per second timeline. Okay. Perfect. Now you're gonna need two sequences. So you should already have a sequence since you imported your footage into Premiere Pro. So let's go ahead and change our sequence settings to make sure they're exactly the sequence settings that we need. So I'm gonna come up to sequence up the top here and hit sequence settings. And now you wanna copy these sequence settings. Don't worry about the frames per second. This is for me, 25 frames per second. If you shot in 60 FPS or 30 FPS, make sure you're in 30 FPS in a 30 FPS time frame. This is what I've got up here but I shot in 50 FPS, so I'm in 25 FPS because I wanna half my clip speed, so that's why it looks like this. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Anyway, don't worry about the top part, just make sure this and this, your horizontal and vertical frame size are identical. Don't worry about this, and then you wanna come down here, hit okay, and you should be left with something that looks a little bit like this. Okay. Let's say you are up to scratch, you're up to speed. Now let's get this into this stacked format. So funny enough, we actually don't do it inside this sequence. We're gonna come back into this sequence in just a moment, but what we wanna do is we wanna create a new sequence. We're gonna come into new, we're gonna come down to sequence, and then I'm gonna select Ultra, Ultra HD 4K and then come into settings here. Now. This is where things get interesting. We wanna make sure our uh, vertical, uh, sorry, we wanna make sure our horizontal is set to 1080 because that's the width of the sequence that we just created. And then this is where the calculator comes in. So we're gonna open up our little calculator here. And what we wanna do is we want to divide 1920, which is the frame size that we just created in our last previous sequence. We wanna divide this by five. And this is because we're using five stacks. If you wanna do three, if you wanna do seven, if you wanna do however many you want, you just wanna divide it by that number. So with that, that should leave us with 384 and we wanna put this in the second box. Perfect, all right, I'm gonna hit okay and now we have this really wide screen. So what you wanna do is you then wanna come back over to your main vertical sequence or what I've called main vertical sequence. I'm gonna hit command C, I'm gonna copy these clips. So I've selected them all just by dragging and dropping, command C, back to our wide sequence here, command V and now our clips are in this wide sequence. Perfect. Okay, now since we are already in the editing tab up here, I have all my effect controls and make sure you're on effect controls. And now I wanna be changing our scale to 29. And what I'm gonna do is to speed up this process quite a lot is I can come to motion, I can click on it, right click and then hit copy and I can select the rest of these four clips, hit paste and now they all have 29 as their scale. Okay, things are looking good, perfect. Now we get into the fun part. Now what we wanna do is make sure the framing on these are perfect. So for me right here on this clip, I can see this temple reflection in the water is a little bit over to the right hand side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in. Ooh, not too much. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and then I'm just gonna move this into the center. We might have to scale in just a little bit more, but I'm happy with that. This here, I'm happy with this composition. So I'm gonna leave it as is. This here, as I can see, as you can see as well, I'm gonna punch in just a, oh, we're on the wrong clip. We're gonna punch in just a little bit and then we are going to rotate this so it is completely level. What, 2.5, not 25. Happy with that and I might place the subject on a little bit more of a lower part of the uh, frame there. And then we've got this one here. I'm happy with this. 
uh, composition. That's what we call them, compositions. And then I'm also happy with this composition. So once you're happy with all the compositions and you've either sped up or slowed down your footage or just left it as normal, we're then gonna nest every single one of these clips. I'm just gonna go through here, nest, nest, nest. Now we get to another fun part, which is color grading. You wanna color grade in this sequence so you can actually see what you're doing. And you also wanna color grade on top of the nest. You don't wanna color grade under the nest. And this is for a few reasons. One, if you need to stabilize your clips, when you stabilize color graded footage, it's so slow, it's extremely painful. So I recommend not to do that. And I would recommend to stabilize your footage before you color grade. So if we need any stabilization on these clips, which I'm about to check, we'll do that quickly. And then also if you wanna turn on or off the color grade, or if you wanna add that color grade effect that I showed you in the beginning of the video, you wanna make sure that you don't have to double click into the nested clip, then turn the color grade off or whatever the case, but just take my word for it. Color grade outside of the nest. Okay, so first things first, let's check this clip. Do we need any stabilization? Things look good to me. What about this clip? Walking, things are looking good, things are looking good. Okay, I would say we don't need stabilization there. What about this clip? Maybe a little, no, things are looking good. Man, those volcanoes in the background. Whew. This clip might need a little bit of stabilization. So I'm gonna come to my effects just down on the bottom left here. Your uh, Premiere Pro might be a little bit different. Uh, whoop, warp Stabilizer, kind of need a space on that S. And I'm just gonna drag Warp Stabilizer on here. It's gonna do a really quick job, which is great because it's not being color graded yet. And hopefully this nails it first go. Let's watch this back. Okay, it's a little bit strange. What we might do is just click no motion and then this should just be still, which it is lovely stuff. And then do we need any stabilization here? I think that's great as well. Okay, perfect. Now we get into the fun part of color grading. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, usually when I do color grading videos and this isn't a color grading video, I never use my LUTs, but for today we are gonna run through very quickly and color grade absolutely everything in this five stack using my LUTs for once. What we're gonna do is just apply the LUT and then we're gonna make some creative changes depending on the clip. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna copy this over. I'm telling you, we're going lightning speed today. I'm gonna to paste it here, probably a little bit too bright down those highlights. That looks great. I'm gonna come here, we're gonna add it to there. I would say the oranges up here are a little bit too yellow. So we're gonna come in here to the hue versus hue and we're gonna just adjust that slightly. I think that's looking really good and we're gonna just increase the shadows a little bit there add a little bit of a vignette and I'm happy with that. I'm gonna to come to this one, we're gonna do the same thing, paste that first grade, which seemingly is absolutely crushing it so far. I'm telling you, one lot, a few little changes and you are cooking with gas. Okay, let's just change this to a little bit more red as well. I'm happy with that. Shadows are down, highlights maybe just down a little bit more as well. And then this one too, we're definitely gonna to need to warm this one up which is more than fine. I don't wanna to go too crazy on it though. We're not gonna to spend too long on this color grade. Maybe a little bit of purple in there. Oh, that's looking tasty before, after. Woo, lovely stuff. That's how fast it is to edit with my LUTs. If you do wanna pick up my cinematic LUTs, you can do so. First link in the description down below. You can use this desk, uh, you can use this discount code, not a discount code, a discount code at checkout for a cheeky little discount. And I promise you that you will be flying through your color grades just like we did there. One LUT worked on all five clips. Of course we tweaked a little bit, but you know, I shot with the wrong white balance here. I shot overexposed here. It's whatever. Small little changes really go a long way. Okay, so now that we've got all our clips ready, they're all color graded. The one is stabilized that needed to be stabilized. I'm now going to select all of these. I'm gonna hit Command C, so we're copying them again. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna come back over to assembly here. I'm gonna double click on main vertical sequence, which is where we were in before. And now I can come in here, Command C, these clips and then I'm going to drop them into here and then we're gonna come back into editing. And now we are really making some serious progress. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stack all of these on top of each other. And because they are nested and all have the same uh, motion settings, they're all on top of each other, okay? So if I remove that, they're all here. Now we get to the stacking side of things. Okay, so I'm assuming for a lot of you, this is gonna be the first time you're making one of these five stack videos, because otherwise, why would you be watching this video? And I know the first time that I made this, it took me so long to nail the numbers I needed to move, like the positioning, for example, the up and, oh, that's side by side, the up and down to make sure it was all even and looked nicely stacked and it wasn't overlapping or there wasn't any gaps, but I'm gonna help you out 
a lot. So literally, here is something that I prepared earlier. We've got a five stack here. This is a complete different five stack, as you can see. We've already got all the settings baked in. Something that I like to do, just in order of good housekeeping, for example, this top one here, it relates to this top clip here and so on and so forth. You know, the middle one is the middle one, you get the idea. And that's what we're gonna do over here. So now I'm gonna click on the top one here. And as you can see, this number changes to 192, okay? So I'm gonna, actually, I can just copy the motion settings over, but you'll need to write this in for your first time. I'm gonna paste here. And now we've got this perfectly in line with the box up here. It's more or less just changing the, you know, the height values, not the side by side. But now there's no black line up here. It's perfectly to the, uh, to you know, to the pixel, if you will. And then we're gonna be able to slot another one in here perfectly by using this value. So we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna copy this. This is the number you need to be copying. And I'm gonna paste it onto here, looking good. And then we've got this one here. We just leave that as is because it's the middle one, but I'm gonna change out the middle one because I don't want it to be, you know, a blue, an orange, and then an orange again. I kind of want it to be blue, orange, blue, and I'm hoping I've got another orange and another blue, but we're about to see, okay? So I'm gonna move this one up here. I'm gonna move this one back down here. And now we've already got three. So I'm gonna come to the fourth one here, and this is the number you'll need to be copying. I'm gonna copy this motion, and I'm gonna paste it here. We're looking good. Now, did I get it right? Is the last one a blue one? I'm gonna finally click on the last one here. This is the number you need to copy. I'm going to copy here. I'm gonna paste here. Boom, it's blue, perfect. And that is how to create a five stack. So now if we play this back, all five clips will be playing at the same time. This can be a little bit hard on your computer as well. Just keep that in mind. And pretty much you're good to go. Now you just set your in and out points, command M and you're sorted. But what if you wanted to do the little color grading effect? Okay. I'll run you through that. So the reason that we color graded on top of our nest, not only because it made it easier to stabilize, but it also made it easier to either adjust our color grade if need be, and or do this color grading reel, which is awesome. So what we're gonna do is we are going to just use this top clip here, for example, and let's say we wanted the reel to play out to about here, and then the color grading starts. So we're gonna make sure this one is selected, and then we're gonna hit Lumetri color on the masking side of town here. And then we're gonna come right here, and we are just gonna pull this all the way out, and then I'm gonna pull it all the way over. So right now, the color grade is not on this clip. Okay, well, make sure that's selected. I'm gonna to come to mask path, and then I'm going to hold shift, go one, two over, which is 10 frames. Click on mask again, Whoop, click on mask again, there we go. And now I'm gonna drag this over the footage. So if we play this back, only the top clip will be affected. Boom, just like that, it's looking good. Okay, that looks great. So now what we can do is we can come to our mask right here, hit copy, and then come down to the metric color. Make sure this is clicked. If it's not clicked, it's not gonna copy. So if I just try to paste it on there, sorry, it's not gonna paste. If I just try and paste it on there, nothing happens until I click on the metric color, hit paste, command V, and now it's pasted. And I wanna do that for each individual clip to make sure they're all at the same time. And the last one there, cool. So now when I watch this back, it's playing ungraded, graded. Just like that, set your in and out points in and out, command M, export, and you're flying. But that is gonna wrap up today's video, guys. If you learned anything, I would love to know what it was down in the comments below. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.